Hey, Dr. Mori, Uncivilized Vitality. Um, we're going to talk about, since we're coming up to the winter camping season, the winter uh, campaigns, we're going to be out. We've got uh, cabin camp coming up early January. We've got um, some kind of winter hike or something outdoors in January. February is the Women's Winter Wonderland uh, overnight camp and natural uh, snow shelter event. Then we got the end of season hunt. Uh, then we're into spring with the 101 and the, the canoe trips, uh, Manitou, uh, and etc. But coming up to the cold season, staying warm at night has been a concern for a lot of people, even when it only dips down uh, to like the lower 40s or whatever. When you get into the 30s, that becomes uh, maybe jacket weather, uh, long pants, but sleeping overnight can be a little uh, a little more challenging when it dips down to uh, the 20s, the teens, uh, or uh, single digits, uh, what I call good sleeping weather, single digits. So uh, let's talk about how to stay warm when you're in the outdoors. This will take a more, uh, I could do a, a longer video later when you're out doing activities. But the main thing to remember when you're outdoors to stay warm is layers. We've talked about this before. It has to start with your first piece of technology, which is your clothing. You have to dress in layers. That's the main thing to remember. In your layers, you want a base layer. This is gonna be something that does, um, has an action called wicking. So it's gonna pull moisture away from your body. You're gonna have insensible water loss. <clears throat> you're gonna sweat and perspire, especially if you're moving around uh, and you're gonna give off sweat. And that, that moisture is gonna get into your clothing and reduce their insulative value. So make sure you want a base layer that's gonna pull that moisture away from your skin. You can use, um, is it polypropylene or poly, yeah, polypropylene? Uh, like long underwear, avoid cotton, obviously cotton kills, so cotton's going to be off this list. If you can afford it, some nice um, silk underwear or even wool, uh, especially now they have merry wool and uh, merino wool uh, type non-itching long underwear. Invest in a good base layer, you're going to be wearing it two, three days in a row, and it will be uh, the difference between you being miserable uh, and safe and uh, warm and dry. So you're gonna have your base layer. Then you're gonna have your um, insulating layer. Your insulating layer is going to be usually your, your normal clothing, uh, maybe a, um, a fleece sweatshirt or a jacket, or uh, for me, I, I wear my UV um, uniform and a pair of long pants. And then you're gonna want an outer layer, okay? So your outer layer, your shell should be uh, water and wind uh, proof or at the very least water wind wind resistant and uh, resistant to abrasion and punctures and such a lot of times especially in northern Michigan we can get by with a base and an insulating layer and if you're not out uh, bushwhacking or uh, running through the woods and the thorns I caught a bunch of thorns yesterday um, we were on our hunt looks like I got mauled by a cat but it's just all uh, hawthorn scratches so my outer layer, if I had an outer layer with some gloves and maybe a heavy duty jacket would protect me better from the thorns instead of the short sleeves, but what are you gonna do is only 40 something degrees. So dressing layers is key. The next thing you're gonna wanna have, now we're gonna talk about how to stay warm when you sleep overnight. We'll talk about staying warm beyond this later. When you go to bed at night, you have to keep in mind dry wool socks. Warm hat, neck, gator. These things are going to be uh, key for your sleeping layers. Okay? This is your daily layers, and then when you go into your sleeping bag, your hammock, under your quilt, um, curl up into a, a, a fetal ball next to the fire, uh, however you sleep, you're gonna change out your layers. Take off your outer layer, your insulating layer can be swapped out for a new or, or a dry insulating layer. Uh, it should be. You should have some uh, sleeping clothing. Base layer, since it's uh, primarily wicking, that typically stays on when you go to sleep. Some people advise changing it out. That's perfectly fine if you want to carry a second base layer for sleeping. But at the very least, I strip off, uh, obviously, my outer and insulating layer. I'll swap that out with a, a dry, I have a really thin uh, merino wool sweater I had found. No, it's not this, but it looks like this shirt, kind of real thin. I'll put that on at night, or I have a, uh, one of those little puffy vests I'll wear in the winter when I sleep just to maintain core temperature. 
I'll swap those out, but I absolutely put on dry wool socks that are only for sleeping. And I have a warmer hat. This is my day hat. I wear this all day long, uh, pretty much every day. This is a wool hat, but I won't sleep in it because it's still gonna have some uh, insensible moisture trapped in it. And then a neck gaiter. This is something that people overlook. You want something around your neck, um, like a turtleneck, or uh, if you have a Michigan hat that comes down, maybe buckle the little, little warm flaps around your chin and ear, but you lose a lot of heat through your feet um, and your head and neck. And matter of fact, if your feet are cold, you put on a warmer hat, uh, it'll warm your feet up. So a warm hat dedicated only for sleeping, and the more ridiculous, the better. Uh, one of those big Michigan hats with the fur and the fur ear flaps that fold down and buckle into your chin, that's great. Throwing a wool uh, buff or a neck gaiter, or even just using your silk um, uh, cravat or morigami from our uniforms and just tying that around your neck. Something that uh, is not going to get, that doesn't have st drag, uh, uh, straggling pieces or uh, anything that can get caught and strangle you while you sleep. So it's better to use a, a buff, something that's designed to go around your neck, or a turtleneck uh, sweater maybe with your sleeping outer layer. So a clothing choice will be important. Can't emphasize these are only for sleeping. Don't go to sleep in uh, cold, wet clothing. Your insulating layer, like maybe the socks you wore during the day, those things you can put under your sleeping bag because your body temperature will dry them out overnight. That's uh, pretty impressive. All right, moving on. After you've changed out your sleeping uh, clothing from your daily clothing and you've planned ahead, the other thing is what are you going, to, uh, how are you going to sleep? I joked about sleeping curled up fetally around the fire, although, you know, anything about 50, you're usually fine with that. Maybe a light blanket or just tuck your hood up on your, your jacket. Uh, your sleeping setup, you should follow the uh, the, uh, the one-third rule. So if we divide your sleeping light, sleeping system into uh, thirds, you want one-third of your sleeping system below you and two-thirds of your sleeping system above you. And I've heard this a lot, like one under, two over, um, different ways to say it. But a good camping rule, we just, I have always said uh, thirds. And this draw a little sleeping little sleeping person here okay. well their eyes aren't open they're sleeping okay so a sleeping person you have to have something under you you need a sleeping pad or and or uh, some kind of uh, air mattress we're just gonna write mat right so a sleeping pad uh, thermal rest closed cell foam uh, a couple of uh, yoga mats rolled out together, an air mattress, uh, a wool blanket folded into thirds, uh, one of those reflecting space blankets, a combination of these items. The main thing is to protect your body from uh, conductive heat loss into the ground. Right? If you are sleeping in a hammock, uh, you're gonna absolutely have to have an underquilt uh, and then sometimes a poncho shell uh, to prevent uh, radiation and convective heat loss through the bottom of that hammock. And then above you, you're going to have to have some kind of blanket or quilt or sleeping bag to retain heat. All right. And then above that, you're going to want some sort of uh, shelter. Now, these are just the layers, so obviously you can double up, like I said, the sleeping pad. Uh, I usually will lay down a space blanket or some sort of vapor barrier, even just a garbage bag or a piece of plastic to prevent uh, moisture from seeping up uh, in the wet months, uh, snow and ice. And then I'll put down um, a, a closed cell foam pad. Sometimes it slides into your uh, sleeping bags, brands like Big Agnes, uh, which I think are the best. And you can uh, use an air mattress. You can just fold up a blanket. You can stuff a browse bag with leaf litter and things from the forest to make sort of a mattress. <clears throat> you can sleep off the ground on a, on a raised bed platform. You can have a hammock with a quilt. Any combination, but you must have something between you and the surface you're sleeping on. And then the second layer above you, the blanket, uh, quilt. Most people opt for a sleeping bag. Uh, I don't use a sleeping bag very often. Uh, the last few years, I've really gotten into just a, a quilt with a little foot pocket. Uh, or some blankets. I've always been a big blanket person because I like to tuck that in and uh, keep it around me when I sleep warm so that way I can move the quilt and uh, vent out some extra heat sometimes. 
so I don't get too uh, clammy in my bag. The uh, blanket quilt sleeping bag could also be a combination. I suggest in the winter sleeping bag. Uh, once you've taken care of your base layer, which is most important, I would say, then uh, the second layer is going to be your sleeping bag with a sleeping bag liner or another blanket inside the bag with you. Your sleeping bag is gonna insulate you through uh, a lot of loft, right? The loftier the better. We'll get into another one with sleeping bags. I'll do a video just about sleeping bags and the different ratings and how to, how to gauge a sleeping bag or make one. And uh, the main point is that you want loft because it's that space that gives you the insulative uh, value of the sleeping bag that wraps around you. So you don't want to get into a nice uh, high quality sleeping bag with some down uh, fill and then throw your heavy wool blanket on top of it and compress that sleeping bag down. That happens a lot. We're used to being at home um, with blankets maybe and the more blankets you pile up the warmer you are. But if you're using a duvet or a quilt uh, on your bed at home and it's got loft, that's what keeps you warm. And when you pile heavy blankets on it, you actually lose uh, insulation. So just layer your top layer a little better by putting your um, sleeping bag liner or your sheet uh, inside your sleeping bag with you or your wool blanket inside there and you'll be a little warmer. And then your shelter needs to be something that will protect you just like your outer layer of clothing. The shelter layer needs to be something that's going to um, keep the elements off you prevent uh, wind and rain mainly. Now you want this to be, you want ventilation in your system so you don't collect a lot of moisture. People sometimes button their tents down too tight and you end up with frost on the inside. That's why I like two walled tents, uh, double walled with the rain fly. Uh, or they'll get under tarp and they'll buckle that tarp down so much that you get no ventilation under there and you get a lot of condensation. And then of course the condensation becomes water. It's such a heat sink, you lose a lot of heat that way. So you wanna stay, um, dry when you're sleeping. And we'll talk about the, I think we have a video on the four horsemen of misery, cold, wet, tired, and hungry. We'll talk about that later or some other video. So your shelter layer, uh, be it a tent, um, uh, a tarp, a you're flying your tarp or pitching your tarp, or you just crawled under some sticks uh, that you've thrown some plastic over. You want your shelter to keep the wind and rain off of you, but still provide ventilation, right? So you have your shelter layer, you have your um, bag layer and you have your mat. Okay? So you have these three layers will comprise your sleeping system. And there's a, a huge amount of variety in there or variation that you can uh, work with and come up with a good sleeping system. And this will change from campaign to campaign. It really just depends. Uh, as a bare minimum, when you go out your um, emergency kit or the things you're carrying with you should provide for these items if you have to make an overnight stay. I know like the survivalists like to carry one of those little thin mylar blankets or they sell that bullshit to you all the time. Oh, just wrap up in this and you'll sleep. I would say that's probably 100% from people that have never actually done that. Um, I've tried it more than once, just it does not work. I mean, you won't die, but you are not gonna spend a good night out there. You might die, I mean, some of them are cheap. Uh, best not to risk it. So I always have some kind of um, like a garbage bag liner or a space blanket I take with me. A space blanket could either be used as the sleeping, uh, as the mat level, or I could put it over me as a shelter. Uh, I always have my poncho with me, and I typically carry my Whoopi or poncho liner. Uh, I actually really like the Swagman roll uh, from Helicon Text the last couple of years. Great. So those three things, a poncho, a space blanket, a garbage bag, all four things. And the Swagman roll, that comprised my... Um, Sorry, if I have to spend an emergency overnight, I still have a sleep system. And then I always have a pair of wool socks and a, um, and, and a net gaiter in my uh, bag. Wool socks are self-explanatory. The net gaiter could either replace my hat if my hat got wet, or it could wrap around my neck if I didn't have um, like a, a silk bandana on me, which I always do. All right, so uh, this is the, the, the main thing you wanna think about is moving around during the day. Obviously, you're gonna be dressing in layers. And then you have to have a, a, another layered system to replace that when you go to sleep at night. And then setting up your sleeping system according to this simple process. Uh, one thing under you, and then a bag or uh, blanket or quilt over you, and then a shelter over that. Same three layer system we use for clothing and uh, getting ready for bed. And then there are others, some other um, 
little techniques you can use a sea to summit waterproof bag and uh, put your take your your clean canteen or your thermos fill it full of uh, sometimes they say not to almost boiling water so that that single walled steel canteen is super hot then you stuff it in maybe your <clears throat> socks you're wearing during the day drop that whole hot water bottle into a sea to summit or a similar waterproof bag dry bag something that seals up just in case you have leaks I've done too many times not to advise people to um, put that in a waterproof bag and then put it in there. Some people say, well, just check the lid. I've woken up uh, too many times being wet. And then the key thing I think also remember would be <clears throat> blankets don't make you warm. Sometimes people say, oh, I need another blanket because I'm cold. Blankets or any kind of covering are only gonna prevent the loss of heat that you, you produce, your body produces. <clears throat> if you get into bed cold, you're not gonna get any warmer, all right? So if you're already uh, experiencing hypothermia uh, or sliding toward that, or you're getting too cold, you need to warm up before you get into the bag. You need to be producing heat. So you need to increase your heat before you get in the bag. Hot water bottle heats, those little hand, helps. Hot water bottle or those little hand warmers. Um, another person in the bag with you, that's your personal business. Uh, it's a good way to make friends, I guess when you're camping, but increase the heat before you get in there. A couple ways you can do that. Eat some, um, there's sometimes people have differing opinions on this. Eat some, uh, like a high protein meal, so you get some thermogenic heat from the digesting process. Some people will say that that draws blood to the digestive system away from the hands and feet, and you get colder feet doing that. Um, physiologically, that stands up, but uh, it's never been my experience. I like to eat a little, heavy, um, not a heavy meal, but I like to eat a little snack before I go to bed so I have some thermogenic heat from the digestion process. And then I'll do a few push-ups or squats or jumping jacks or if I'm in a tent, don't have room, maybe some mountain climbers or planks. Just a light bit of exercise for a minute or two. Sometimes it's really freaking cold uh, and I'm on the ground. I'll get in the bag first and then I'll do some uh, crunches or some uh, twisting sort of things to sort of uh, start wake the muscles up and produce some heat. Be careful not to, which I've also done, um, catch a hamstring cramp or something as you exercise too vigorously in the bag and then you gotta scramble out and stretch your leg um, and start over. But using a hot water bottle uh, somehow to increase heat or maybe uh, light exercise just before you get in the bag. So these things will increase your heat. And of course, there's the age old um, ancient expedient of um, fire. So you can have a fire that reflects into your shelter. Can't advise us with today's um, tendency to using uh, of using nylon tents and uh, nylon tarps and things that will melt or catch fire. You're using an old um, waxed canvas, a heavy tarp. Uh, you can angle that the right way. That'll stand up to um, few sparks or embers from a fire better than a nylon tent will. So you want to increase your own personal heat before you get into the bag. You can help, uh, you can do increasing the heat by light exercise, uh, the use of water bottle or hand warmer, or the use of fire uh, by reflecting that. Obviously no space heaters or personal heaters inside tents. Uh, that goes back to the ventilation in our system up here. So there's a few ways to stay warm when you're sleeping outdoors with the Uncivilized Vitality um, group this winter on all our campaigns. And we'll do another video. We'll talk about signs and treatment, hypothermia, the chill lanes and such. And what else? Sleeping bag ratings. Anyway, find this helpful. Leave a comment below. Leave some questions below so I can address those in future videos. And I will see you out in the snow. I'm excited. This is my favorite season, Northern Michigan. Three feet of snow, single digits, it's the best time to be outdoors. Uh, no bugs, they've uh, gone back to hell where they belong, as people say. And no poison ivy, uh, which my wife is deathly afraid. <laughs> anyway, uh, that's it. So uh, like and subscribe and share the video. Thank you.